Eileen has been a lifetime member with uh, Salt Creek Patch Makers, and I, she is seated in the front row, and we're going to see some of her gorgeous work. Don't forget that the raffle quilt that is in, that is towards the front by the cafe, that was also done by our Eileen Tucker and donated for our raffle. Eileen was blessed to have a mother who quilt, was a quilter. Her grandmother and her great-grandmother were also quilters. As children, they always knew when company was coming because that's when her prized quilt would, be, would appear on the bed. She had been sewing for many years, made a pinafore dress with ruffles for a little sister when she was just 10 years old, before she joined 4-H. For eight years, 4-H was an important part of her life. She had both food and clothing projects, sewing clothing for her sisters and herself kept her, kept her busy. Her, the first big summer project she remembers was constructing seven pairs of bloomers for each of the five girls. Her mother cut them out and she sewed them on her Singer treadle sewing machine. Throughout her school days, she made clothes and helped mother sew for the family. Over the next 20 years, she sewed for her family, upholstered chairs, fitted sheets for her king size bed, and every curtain that hung in the house. In fact, she made her own wedding dress with 26 covered buttons with loops. She also remembers when her daughter told her at the supper table one night that she needed a pair of blue slacks for the next day. Kids, right? So what does she do? This was at a time when she couldn't go to the store and get, and get fabric. Stores closed at five o'clock. So she cut up a pair of her own slacks and made her a pair, her daughter a pair for the next day before she went to bed that night. Now her first quilt, she made a nine patch. It was 48 inches. She made this before her first child was born in 1958. Her mother gave her a bag of scraps. She made the top and her aunts held a quilting bee to quilt it for her. Aww. She used the same quilt for each of our five children. Her five children, not mine. <laughs> It was in the laundry every week for almost 10 years. When the time came to decide who gets the baby quilt, she made the decision to cut it up into five doll-sized quilts, as you see here. The amount of binding needed to, for the job was equivalent to binding a queen-sized quilt for each of those baby quilts. <laughs> They hosted, the Tuckers hosted a foreign exchange student for a year. When he went home in June and shortly thereafter, her two sons went off to college, her house was just a bit too quiet. So she decided to enroll in college and finish her degree while her sons were in school as well. Um, she graduated from Milliken in 1980 with a degree in elementary education. That year, there were 50 applicants for every job posting job posted. Her first teaching experience was as a long-term substitute teacher. She had completed work for her degree by the end of the first semester in June and was at loose ends. Her mom offered her an applique kit to keep her hands busy. It was time consuming. The tulips you see in front of you took her several years to complete the top she needed to temporarily set it aside. She had no experience in hand quilting at the time. In the 1980s, it seemed everyone was making sampler quilts. Plantation Pines shop in Redwood Village Shopping Center indicator was teaching many classes. Her mother attended one and planned to make a sampler for each of her children. She invited uh, Eileen over one day a week so she could teach her what she had learned. The blocks were quilted one block at a time, then joined together. That was the very first quilt she ever entered in a show. 
she, her mom assured her she was doing a good job, but she was afraid that her mom was a little prejudiced, you know, like we all do. But she entered it into a judged quilt show where no one knew her, Home Bureau Shero and Vandalia, and it took the blue ribbon. <laughs> so in 1984, there was a 50th wedding celebration of Lyle and Nellie Boyd. Their children and grandchildren, numbering 32 teenagers and adults, started planning and preparing a year in advance. The celebration was a grand affair held in Argena Community Building, where countless family gatherings had been held. Now, this was no just typical celebration. Not only was there a buffet dinner, extravagant decorations with balloons covering the ceiling, a floor show written and presented by family members, and a belly dancer. They used Mother's Calico Stash as their tablecloths. It was our gift to them was a memory quilt. When we gathered for Mother's birthday in March 20, on March 28th or Easter, and we're sitting around her dining room table after eating, Mother posed the question, not yet, <laughs> what am I going to do with all those calico prints? Someone popped up with the answer, make butterfly quilts. Mother had completed a butterfly quilt for her bed, which we had all admired. This is the interesting part. This is why I don't want them to lift it yet. We immediately cleared the table and started cutting. By the end of the day, they had cut enough for 10 quilts. They gathered at Mother's, set up a cottage industry with four to five sewing machines, several ironing boards and cutting stations manned by her children and grandchildren, made up kits and sent them home with family members. They ended up with 32 of these gorgeous butterfly quilts. Even the men helped. All 32 quilts were finished and bound by the end of three years, one for each of their children and grandchildren. Eileen did the construction on this quilt and chose red and green sashing so she could put it on her bed at Christmas time in remembrance of those past big boisterous parties. She was reading some quilting magazines and was amazed by one article about a quilter who was making 12 quilts a year. Obviously, she knew something that Eileen didn't. She chose to attend the Decatur Guild's quilt show. Her husband dropped her off on his way to school and she spent the entire day viewing quilts and checking out the vendors. She was particularly attracted to the Itch and to Stitch booth and the rotary cutter. Can we any of you imagine making quilts now without your rotary? I can't. Um, a 12, 24 inch ruler as well as a cutting mat. The vendor assured her that with these tools, I could cut 16 layers at once. She also mentioned template free quilt making and strip piecing. She spent the remainder of the day looking at books before deciding to buy Blanche Young's Boston Commons. She went home, made that rotary cutter cut 14 layers of fabric and loved the quilt pattern. The design appeared as if by magic. Her first Boston Commons was made as a wedding gift for my daughter, Rachel. She was living and working miles away, and I didn't have to hide my quilt making project. The stories in this quilt remind Eileen of the popular doll at the time, Strawberry Patch. She went on to make a total of 14 quilts of this design, and it is another collection of fabric in her stash to make number 15. She found, she said it was difficult collecting seven coordinating fabrics. When her youngest daughter left for college, the empty nest syndrome hit hard. To lift her spirits, her husband took her to an estate auction, which had been advertised in the local paper. An elderly woman lived in a three-story house in Vandalia. Three huge auctions were held to dispose of her belongings. The ad said there was a semi-load of fabric and notions. Tom took a personal day. They went early, taking a magic marker with them. There were seven rows of apple crate boxes of fabric of every type imaginable. She used that magic marker to mark an X on the boxes she wished to buy. He dumped some of the boxes of stuff, fabric, in open spaces. We had our full-size station wagon stuffed 
with fabric. She even rode home with fabric around her feet and a box on her lap, and she only spent $115. Oh, no. <laughs> this next quilt is a king-size quilt made up of 15 blocks. In the early 1990s, Decatur Quilt Guild members made blocks for each other. She prepared kits for individual blocks completed, complete with marking seams allowances and instruction seats, sheets and distributed them. Many of the blocks are hand pieced. The color of this quilt are Eileen's favorite, her, her husband's favorite, so it is named for him. The fabrics are ones she purchased with, with, when M's Quilt Shop in Clinton held its going out of business sale. She especially liked Jenny Buyer fabrics and used it in this quilt. Let it, this be a lesson to all of you. She did not sew a label on her finished quilt 20 years ago. Now she cannot remember the name of the block. It's not in her encyclopedia of patchwork blocks. Maybe she'll find a leftover kit. There's still hope. She loves the secondary pattern. As you can see in this quilt, it really shines. Does anybody know that block? We have lots of quilters in here. Okay. Now this next quilt is called the Modern Lover's Knot Quilt. She made this quilt from auction fabric. She cut the striped fabric into strips before cutting individual pieces for her blocks. The stripe of that fabric is exactly the width she needed for this pattern. She learned she could not fold the strips in half and cut two layers because it made blocks mirror image. Notice the knot in each block rotates in the same direction. She pieced and hand quilted this quilt while sitting with her newborn grandson while her daughter went back to work. It is her favorite quilt. Its collars are so soft and dainty. She purchased Patchwork Portfolio by Jenny Beyer. There are very detailed instructions for drafting patterns and original designs. She segregated blocks into the categories four patch, five, six, seven, and eight patch, and provided a plastic template to place over individual quilt designs to draft patterns in any size you needed for your project. The name of the block is Dutch <coughs> Blades, which she chose to make of polished cotton. One of the fabrics is a stripe and hand quilted this one. Her daughter Michelle chose it as her wedding gift, wedding quilt. On a shopping trip with friends, Eileen walked into this shop and immediately saw a quilt hanging from the rafters, Batik Beauty. She was enchanted. It was a basket quilt, but a new design. She purchased the pattern, then spent months debating what fabrics to use. Then the guild took a road trip to a national show in Southern Indiana. She saw packets of hand dyed fabrics, each packet a different color. There were eight pieces in each packet, a fat eight, um, 9 by 18 originally priced at 25 but marked down to $12.50. I debated all day whether she should buy and decide the end of it. I'm sorry, I lost my place. I debate, she be, debated all day whether she should buy and decide at the end of the day just before leaving the show. It was something she really wanted to try. She devised a cutting scheme using two fat eights that gave her two blocks. This quilt is called Watercolor of Wonder. She's absolutely gorgeous. She gave the quilt as a Christmas gift. Jan chose this quilt. That's your grandmother-in-law? No, uh, Sam's wife. Oh. In 1991, one of Eileen's cousins, Ellen, requested that she organize and teach a group of cousins that were not quilters to make an album quilt. When Ellen was 16 years old, she, by the way, just celebrated her 101st birthday. The Edgecombe family made an album quilt but considered her too young to participate. She'd always wanted to make one. Eileen chose the block Brackman's, from Brackman's Encyclopedia of Pieced Quilt Designs, identified as Chimney Sweep, and typed up plans for 20 plus people to each make quilts. We needed a few more participants to make nice size quilts. Ellen asked if my sisters Hazel and May wouldn't like a quilt. Of course they would, but didn't do much sewing. <laughs> Hazel offered to embroider names on the blocks if she would sew them for her. May would, could embroider her own, and that meant she was making blocks for three quilts. 
They continued working, but still lacked a few more blocks. Ellen asked me this time, Eileen, wouldn't your children like a quilt? Sure they would, but they're not interested in sewing or embroidering. Now she was making blocks for eight quilts. She finished Hazel's king size quilt immediately. She did a magnificent, whoops, mag. My fingers don't want to work, I'm so sorry. She did a magnificent job embroidering. By this time, she was thoroughly sick of looking at these blocks and set them aside. She also went back to teaching school. Uh. Daryl was so proud that he got his done first. <laughs> she had collected signatures at a family reunion of other family members who were not involved in the project, but she wanted them represented in her quilt. The king size with blocks set on point without, without sashing. The last few years, she has concentrated on completing UFOs. It was time to finish her cousin's quilt. She finished binding the quilt in January 2024. This one is, she continued making Boston Commons quilts and held classes for those who asked her. The luminescence in this black, gray, and tan quilt was the goal of each, but not always achieved. It seemed to glow. The Boston Commons won Judge's Choice at the 1993 National Quilters Association annual show held in North Carolina and was the last show, last quilt she hand quilted. One of her grandsons, Zach, chose it as his Christmas gift. It's gorgeous. If you could look at this, you would think that it was machine quilted. The stitches are so tiny. They're perfect. They're beautiful. She purchased a used sewing machine with an embroidery attachment, which inspired her to make an embroidered quilt. She searched for an embroidery pattern, but couldn't find one she liked. She had one small floral sprig. Tim helped me design a full nine inch block using multiple copies of that design. Eileen experimented with thread colors to match colors in the piece blocks. She was learning to use a new sewing machine and machine embroidery unit at the same time and was pleased with the results. <laughs> About 2020, the Rage and Table Runners was using, was made using striped fabric. I made several, then one day remembered for seven and a half yards. What a wonderful use of that fabric. She cut the whole seven and a half yards into 60 degree triangles in one day and started playing with the design. Her son, Tim, she sent pictures of two different triangles that resulted. He developed miniature cards of the two triangles. Oh. No, 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 sorry. Um, she juggled little pictures of her two triangles until she had the design she liked and then glued them on a foundation that became her sewing guide. This quilt earned its name Border Frenzy because once she started working on it, she could not stop. She finished the top in a couple of weeks and sewed together long rows of triangles, top to bottom, one of their few original designs. Eileen and her husband are blessed and fortunate to have 14 great-grandchildren. Each has been gifted with a baby quilt. She liked making bugs in a jar. Collecting fabrics for the jar was a long-term effort. When they, they were blessed with five great-grandchildren within a six-month period, she made four of them to give the four boys. Next is Sue's, Sue's Cousins, an embroidery pattern from OESD, Oklahoma Embroidery School of Design, has been a popular baby quilt. She saw a picture in a magazine that displayed alternate piece blocks using triangles rather than squares, and she loved the looks of it. The embroidered design seemed to fit a rectangle better, so she juggled the numbers to find measurements for the piece blocks. She was shopping for quilt fabric when she saw a Hoffman panel of the alphabet with animals and impulsively purchased one. When Eileen left the store and joined her husband in the car, I pulled out the panel. She pulled out the panel. He admired it and said, how many of those did you buy? He sent her back to buy more. 
She used the pattern published in Quilt Maker magazine called Frogs as a setting for this quilt. The frogs pattern used six and a half inch pieces to make the blocks. The panel is lent itself to the six and a half inch blocks. Perfect match. Of course, there are no multiples of 26 that would lend itself to rows for a quilt, so she improvised and made embroidered blocks in the four corners. And she's ready for their future great grandchild. In 2022, Quilt Maker Magazine celebrated its 40th year of publication by publishing patterns for a mystery quilt in six installments throughout the year. Eileen decided to make that quilt, but started to wait to start sewing until she had the first four magazines in hand. She had had delivery problems in the past and wanted to make sure she had each installment before moving before she started. She completed the blocks in the first four installments and was waiting for number five. Number five, it never arrived. She called Quilt Maker and they had no copies to sell. Checked eBay and Amazon and quilt shops. One of our guild members had a subscription and gave her a copy of that installment. When the magazine, last magazine of the year arrived, <coughs> she looked, she thought the quilt design looked unfinished and made extra blocks to fill the spaces. Gorgeous. I love your use, all your values of red, and that is just yeah. phenomenal. At our guild rummage sale in February of 2022, even though Eileen had promised herself she would not buy, she could not resist this beautiful piece of oriental fabric. Think Bethany Reynolds, Stack and Whack. She counted the repeats, both lengthwise and crosswise. There were four lengthwise and the same on the other half of the fabric, which would make 12 blocks. She paid $2 for it, went home, cut it up immediately. She has used this block before and learned how to alter the pattern so she can make both 12 and 6 inch blocks rather than the 14 inch in the book. When she went looking for companion fabrics, she learned oriental fabrics with the gold etching were no longer being produced. A guild member agreed to swap fabrics. Five inch strips with the fabric yielded pieces for four six inch stack and whack blocks for the border. The setting is one called Wedding Bands, found in Judy Martin's Stellar Quilts. Donna Boyer quilted this one for her and she did a magnificent job. Now you remember I said she didn't have all that much fabric. This is what is left and that includes salvage. Now, Eileen has celebrated her 87th birthday on March 18th, just a few days ago. She's not finished quilt making and presently has two quilt tops at her long arm quilter shop. She's hoping they would be ready for this show. I have, she has another top ready to send to her and, had, and she has yet another set of UFOs waiting to be set together. As long as she can see to thread a needle, she wants to quilt. Thank you. You have done tremendous work and you are an inspiration to all of us. I hope I have done your quilts justice in presenting them today.